Test one two one two. Test one two. Test one two. The game is a little loud on my end, so how does it sound on yours? How about now? Am I still quiet? Is the game still quiet? Because uh, Windows decided to reset all my audio settings. Okay, well, I guess we can deal with this. I'll call you on Skype now. Okay, uh, so this time I will take you out, out of the screen you know, before uh, starting the stream. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to link it on Twitter and Discord now, so one sec. Alright, so I guess it's about time to get back to uh, probably what's going to be one of the harder challenges in the early game. Yeah, we have the second half of Castlevania and the Zelda Nightmare Gate. Yeah, that's my goal for today. If I can get through those two, uh, I'm going to be satisfied. I might go further depending on how long that takes, but uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge getting there, so... And you can just kind of actually just uh, uh, dash over everything there, so. Now we're finally at the point where we have the dash. Yeah, so uh, the game actually finally becomes sort of similar to what it's actually played like at this point. Yeah. Still missing two major uh, movement options, which is the double jump and the air dash, but neither are going to come in any early fashion, let's say. Yeah, they're still a ways off from where we are right now. In Castle, I think you have to do the Mega Man gate before you even get to the vault for the air dash, yep. so... Yeah, we've got a ways to go before we're getting any more movement options. Uh, okay, I'm gonna left here. So now that I have the dash, I can actually, you know, kind of avoid enemies instead of running into everything. Always nice. Yeah, the the dash really, uh, just the amount of iframes you have on the dash is truly insane. Can't be overstated, just how, like, versatile it is. And I'm going back up to the, uh clock tower segment, let's say. I, I could have taken the teleporter, but I guess it's not really any faster or slower to go this way. And uh, I'll demonstrate when I get the chance, but the dash does go through all traps as well as all enemies. There are exceptions to what you can uh, pass through with the dash, but they're always very clearly labeled with red outlines. So basically anything you see that does not have a red outline, you're going to be able to dash through. And I'm not sure when we'll first see uh, anything we can't dash through. That's a very well explored thing in general, which is uh, the ability that Zephyr gives you the most ridiculously powerful tool in the dash, with, you know, the 20 eye frame shine leap that you have, but constantly messes with you and your ability to use it with stuff like the red outline that prevents you dashing through it. And uh, you can go down here to get a chest, which would be full of cheese in our case. 
Alan, this is kind of a, you know, an explicit tutorial. And even though it's a, oh god, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tragedy. <laughs> so this is actually kind of hard to do for a tutorial. Uh, Sasaka Zephyr. Oh, and this is pretty precise, actually. Yeah. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, I don't think this anti-dashing field actually ever shows up again. It might show up like once. But this is more to get you used to the idea that there are going to be areas later in the game that take away your dash. Uh, and for quite long periods of time, in fact. I think it might show up back in the vault? I don't remember. Perhaps. And now we are at Death's Flying Castle. I believe this tile set is from uh, Harmony of Dissonance. I'm not quite sure, though. I think you're right, yes. I uh, replayed all of the uh, Game Boy Advance Castlevanias fairly recently, and uh, Harmony of Dissonance is kind of bad, I'm going to say. <laughs> the progression of the castle didn't really make any sense, and I, I don't know, the it just kind of felt uninspired in general. That's uh, one of the interesting things I've thought about with Castlevania is that, you know, the recent games that came out after Super all kind of take place within the castle for the most part. And like, you know, Castlevania 1, 2, and Super, you know, have the trek to the castle. Right. Well, Ecclesia kind of played with that idea because it takes quite a while to actually unlock the castle on that. In general, though, I think Castlevania is uh, oh God, what's probably that? one of the... Oh no, what's going on? I didn't see that ghost. It's okay. <laughs> Ow! But I was saying that uh, Castlevania has kind of held up pretty well as far as one of the older games go. It doesn't have a ton of stinkers in it as far as like you'd expect. And a lot of the games, or I won't say a lot, but a decent amount of the games have aged pretty well, I'd say. Yeah, Castlevania is a fairly consistent series. They're like, you know, there's Castlevania 64 and all that. But for the most part, the main entries, I guess you could say, in the series are all, are all worth playing. Except the 3D ones. We don't talk about the 3D ones. The 3D ones and the PlayStation 2 are basically just, you know, bad Devil May Cry clones, but... Oh, and I... I need to go a activate another thing. But that's okay, because enemies will stay cleared out when you uh, kill them in this game. They do not respawn like, you know, Mega Man X style. Oh, so I was right, by the way. Apparently the anti-dashing field does show back up in the vault. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, there's only, like, you know, a, a thousand screens in this game, so I can be <laughs> forgiven for not remembering. And this is a uh, hint that there's a statue you can enter, like, a door on another screen. Uh, it's not actually mandatory for anything. It just contains some, in our case, cheese. But uh, uh, I, I know some people are kind of confused by that. It's a, kind of a vague hint, but that's what, it, that's what it's talking about. It's a very vague hint, honestly. It's yeah. uh can't blame people for missing this one. And throw that through there. And I believe it's that's... not one the item finder helps you with either. Uh, I believe this whole puzzle over here is just for getting cheese. You can see uh, the basic mechanic. I won't spoil the whole thing. So you want to kill those witches real quick or they'll, uh, you know, start uh, dodging you. And it's, it's just a bad time in general. This guy kind of got glitched out on the stairs. I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen, but we'll take it. It is interesting that the Castlevania get gate feels so much more combat oriented than like the Zelda one does, where like the enemies are for the most part set up as obstacles and annoyances as you dungeon crawl. Yeah, it feels a lot more like the enemies are actually, you know, trying to fight you here, as opposed to just, you know, being in your way. Well, I guess as Wafu said, but at a lower vocabulary level, vocabulary <laughs> level for all the uh, uh, slow people in the audience. 
So uh, basically this area consists of three uh, mini screens like this where you go through and uh, collect uh, relics. You know, like in Symphony of Night you had to collect all the relics to unlock Dracula and that's basically what we're doing here except for death. So that gave me a checkpoint which means there's going to be stuff that spawned on the way back and as you can see there's some more traps but it's not really a big deal. Because, you know, I just tanked it, so <laughs> that works. <laughs> uh, the wonderful brow cow. Yes. You can tell that he's the one who inspired you. Oh, and uh, make sure you whip all the walls, because it's really important to find stuff here. I believe that's just going to lead to some cheese, but uh, here's, some, here's some cheese. Yeah. Always good to get some hearts. Can you Why imagine how much cheese there's going to be in Metroid? Oh yeah, every wall is just, you know, filled with cheese. <laughs> All that cheese is going to go bad, because I'm not getting any of it. Oh yeah, so these doors actually don't have the uh, screen transition uh, graphic over them, which is kind of confusing at first, in my opinion. Oh, and this is the actual way to progress, so I don't need to hear yet. And you're going to see my see me over the course of the game just reset a lot because I I, I don't want to take a hit that I took so get get used to that it's only gonna get more frequent gonna ramp that death counter yeah I uh, fighting the final boss my first time through the game I went up 200 deaths just on him from you know resetting every time I didn't like how the first phase turned out so I'm kind of obsessed with the idea oh god and here's uh, some mimics uh, they're, they only show up here, which is probably a good thing, but... Yeah, even uh, if they are real, we can only get cheese. <laughs> and this area is entirely uh, combat-based. And it's gonna lead us to a boss, I think. Yeah, it is. Yes, this is the track to Menace. So, uh, Menace is actually a cool boss. We'll talk to him once I get there. Talk about him, rather. And uh, those dancing skeletons, if you scan them, you'll see that Zephyr added them because one of his roommates told him to uh, put that enemy from Castlevania in his game, and so he did. <laughs> this this hallway is, uh, is kind of one of the more stricter combat challenges that you'll get. Oh god. Yeah, uh, you don't want to let those... Uh, basically, you don't want to let these guys do anything is the main uh, thing to keep in mind here. Just take care of them quickly, like these witches especially. See, she's uh, out of my range now. <laughs> the dagger special helps a lot in this respect, yeah. actually. So, this guy. He is from, uh... Well, let's wait for the cutscene. He is from, uh... Da Dawn of Sorrow, I want to say. Yeah. I think so. And uh, Zephyr actually recreated him from looking at a YouTube video, because he hadn't played the game itself. And he did a pretty good job, if I can say so myself. He, he plays exactly like you'd expect a Castlevania boss to for real. Menace is, uh, for the most part, one of the, I think, the difficulties of Menace, and why a lot of people, like, I've heard a lot of negative opinions about Menace himself, is that, uh, the actual melee vulnerable point on him is very, very small, and the Claire's uh, hair whip has a tiny hitbox at the end of it. And at first, it's not obvious how to uh, actually connect with Menace several times with the hair whip. Yeah, so I have very low DPS uh, compared to when I was practicing saying this guy for golds. So I'm going to take this nice and slow. He can't really do a whole lot if you, uh, you know stay away from him, basically. The and lovely tantrum attack. His attacks are fairly well telegraphed, uh, but you don't want to... you want to kind of try and keep your distance. The uh, the only oh. slight tell that's uh, that's hard to tell is uh, the one that you got hit by, which is uh, the his breath attack. Yeah. Like He only opens his jaw very slightly to actually notice it. Uh, some other things about Menace is that uh, he's actually three times vulnerable to melee attacks when he's charging his laser. Uh, this will never- you will probably never have the gonads to actually try exploiting this in any way, but it's something to note. 
And uh, I keep, you know, messing up the timing for the dash on the laser, but that's okay. It's uh, it's pretty hard to do from the top, honestly. I find yeah. that if I uh, if I'm not from the ground, then I have a hard time dodging it. And like I said, you just want to try and keep your distance from this guy. You don't need to go for DPS. You can just uh, stay around. He's not going to do anything lethal if you uh, stay away. Uh, there's one unfortunate thing that can happen. I'm not sure what causes it. Okay. But Menace will summon his fire pillars at the same time that he charges a laser. Yeah, that killed me earlier. So That's, that's okay. a very, very unfortunate se <laughs> sequence of events. Or he can summon when he's doing his little tantrum thing. It actually took me a while to get Menace to sub-20 that I wanted to try and gold timing him because he's, uh, whether he takes a step back or step forward is completely random. Yeah. And that affects his skill set. Oh god. A guy flew through, the fl flew through the flames and I couldn't get a read on him. Oh. <laughs> Also, in a normal playthrough, you will have uh, much more hard energy than we have access to here. Yeah, and so... And you'll be able to pelt him with daggers. You can see I did 3x damage with the whip right there by basically luck. Oh, you actually got one. That's amazing. I've heard, uh, Menace seems to vary wildly on who has difficulty with him. It seems that some people actually struggle a lot. Like one person in Kepit's, uh, that frequent in Kepit's, uh, playthrough said that he had a lot of long struggle with Menace. It took him longer for Menace than it did with Death. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. This guy is, uh, like I said, he, he, if you try to go for the DPS on this guy, you're gonna get wasted, basically, is the thing. And uh, the timing on the oh god, the timing on the uh, laser dodge can be pretty tricky, <laughs> and he can just walk into his breath attack too. It also works. Oh, that was a tragedy. <laughs> that was a great melee hit. I honestly wasn't expecting to have trouble with this guy, but he might be here for a little bit, so... Let's sit tight and, you know, just get to know this guy. He has a very lovely sprite. <laughs> a real looker. Goal timing kind of messes with your brain a bit, with uh, yeah. Menace especially. He dies so quickly if you're going for the gold with the actual DPS, but here he, he lasts forever, and that's what's kind of throwing me off. See, the thing is, you don't want to stay close to him because he'll do that. See, I'm not actually sure what causes his uh, double arm raise. Like, when he. Because normally he does his uh, one arm and then the other quickly, like, as yeah. shown in this run. But sometimes he just throws them both up at the same time. I've had a thought that uh, his attack triggers can be health based at times. That uh, if you do a certain amount of damage to him, you will automatically trigger an attack. Yeah, that could be it. Cause I think that uh, that might also cause the the laser and fire pillar combo too. So I'm gonna try and get in like you know three hits and then just kind of retreat, because it's hard to tell when he's gonna raise his arms like that. There is a tell, but uh, it's better to just not assume that you're going to be able to read the tell, basically. I'm not sure about you, but I actually have a lot harder of a time uh, Claire dodging, like Claire juggling, oh, than yeah? I do Jerry juggling. Yeah, I, I, I would say Claire, uh, Claire juggling is harder to do than Jerry juggling. Uh, there's a, it has its own specific set of timings, and especially the way the hitbox works with the, uh, the whip itself. Okay, that's okay. 
This is going pretty cleanly. I jinxed it, I know. There we go. Kind of took it risky at the end, but I had enough to take one more hit, so it worked out anyway. And, that is and he collapses. Yes. Oh, I now possess uh, Dracula's rib. You know, that's this. That's the uh, reference to the famous mistranslation, or, or I guess misspelling from Castlevania Two. For the record, Menace's death animation takes fucking centuries in its agony trying to gold time him. Oh yeah, you don't actually know if you've gotten it because you have to wait for him to die, <laughs> or finish dying rather. So yeah, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing which bosses give me uh, hardships, let's say, now. Because, like <laughs> I said, uh, I'm used to fighting them in the uh, boss rush gallery with, you know, in-game stats and all that. So the way they behave, uh, when you actually let them do what they're supposed to do is a bit foreign to me at this point. Like, you can see at the start of that battle, I was going up there and jumping and throwing holy waters at him. You're going to be able to throw a whole lot more holy waters than I am, yeah. even just getting to this uh, in the main game. So his health will go down much, uh, much quicker. Uh, Nightmare at the moment does is interesting in, like, how different you have to approach bosses, because you will see every attack, more than likely. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's kind of cool you know, it, that... Uh, because, you know, even with base stats, you can, like, melt Vault Demon, for example, if you truly want to. But you're not going to be able to do that here. Yeah. Um, what was it? I was going to say something I forgot, so it can't have been important <laughs> anyway. Oh, and I fell in a pit. <laughs> That's a great death right there. Because I've been wondering, like, I'm probably going to do another playthrough soon because I can't be helped. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm broken on some terrible level. But I'm wondering if I wanted to do Nightmare or Achilles for the most part. I think uh, Nightmare kind of offers more of a new experience, because with Achilles, uh, you're not really forcing, forced to change up your actual playstyle that much. You just have to be more consistent and not get hit. Whereas, uh, like... There are bosses I've ever never actually beaten legitimately without, or, or like my first time through without doing a quick kill. Decimator in particular, I've, I've never seen his third phase. And even on Achilles, that wouldn't uh, actually change. So uh, I'm going to have to learn an entirely new phase of a late game boss who is kind of difficult when I get to him. That's going to be fun. Decimator is in fact much, much harder if you don't do the quick kill for him. Because uh, his third phase is complete ass. And it sucks. Yeah, I've never seen his third form because the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, I bet I can get quick kill him to get around this, and sure enough, he can. But we're not going to be able to do that, not with this DPS. And we had another kind of little combat corridor there for intermission. Now we've got some uh, actually kind of difficult platforming. This might be the most difficult platforming section of the game so far, actually. Kind of wait for these platforms to. Okay, so that didn't look too bad, but the thing is, you have to do both sides of this room on one uh, life going back and forth. So that's where the difficulty comes in. It's like, how consistent can you uh, can you make it? I, uh, the funny thing is, I saw, I watched uh, Robin LCL's playthrough of this, and he struggled a lot on this room in particular. And uh, this ghost is going to trick you into cutting these uh, these ropes, but you do not want to do that. So I died there, so let's do this side of the room first because it's harder. Your internet's being very friendly, by the way. There's uh, very little delay. Okay, cool. It's good because, you know, last night it decided to be decidedly unfriendly. Okay, so let's lure this ghost over here instead of trying to fight it over there. That works much better. Oh, and you're going to actually have to drop one of these. Or a couple of these, in fact. So, <laughs> yes, Claire, we know. <laughs> 
Yeah, this side of the room is actually kind of challenging, not gonna lie. So let's lure the ghosty over here, so then we can kill him. I, I don't know if you really kill ghosts, but we can make them, you know, phase out of existence or whatever. Okay. There is, uh, there is one thing which is uh, probably fun to note for people who would play this uh, and not play the old version, is that Claire's dash used to have a, uh, a pullback function or property to it that is uh, no longer there anymore. And because uh, that was a, a hot fit, there was a hot fix that recently came through, and uh, it used to be where if you went the other direction, and like within a few frames of starting the dash, Claire whipped back to whatever direction you sent, you chose. Yeah, I, I actually kind of got used to using that, so I'd uh, kind of you know, oh my god, I just jumped into the spikes like a dumbass. I had actually kind of reuse how to learn her dash in the intended way. So, uh, pro tip, don't hit the spikes at the bottom of the screen, because they do a lot of damage. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said earlier, the uh, traps in this game have their own uh, damage type, and there is uh, an item you can equip, uh, the trap pants, I believe, to reduce uh, uh, damage from them, but obviously we're not going to get to use that, so... There is also a talent that reduces trap damage by one full wholesale, but uh, we're not getting that either. Yeah. And spawn some witches at the end, just kind of mess with you. Now we have all three uh, relics, and we can go back and uh, proceed to the next area. So this area went better than I was expecting, actually. I kind of struggled here my first time through the game, but uh, like I said, that last area is probably the hardest platforming so far. And as Wafu said, even uh, some of the better players who have done playthroughs struggled there their first time. So if you struggle there too, don't get discouraged. It is actually a fairly hard room. And I just let the Mimic jump into me because I apparently want to be friends with him. Oh, and don't try to dash through these guys because you'll d your dash will run out while you're inside their sword. And that's uh, not fun. I... Didn't know that. Huh. That was the first time I've seen that. Yeah, I, I was trying to do it uh, earlier when I was uh, testing something on Nightmare Mode that I'm not going to talk about because it was a bug and it was a spoiler bug. But uh, Zephyr fixed that, so <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> I, I we guess keep I can... sending... Uh, oh, go ahead. I guess I can talk about it. Basically, if you had the uh, optional bosses unlocked and started a new game, they would stay unlocked. We accidentally saw that. So I decided to go see what happens when you actually fought them. And uh, when you actually fought them, your state was not reset properly after them. So you got movement abilities uh, you were not supposed to have. And uh, Zephyr's fixed that. It wasn't really a big issue because you'd have to have unlocked the optional bosses already anyway. But we figured it was something that he should know about. Did you get double jump too? Uh, you get double jump in the fights, but you only carry out air dash. I see. And this is the final area of Castlevania. It uses the uh, track Lost Painting from uh, Castlevania Cynthia Knight, which is a wonderful track that everybody loves. Uh, and here's just another kind of, you know, kill corridor. Actually, kind of... Oh, and these guys uh, first show up here. You want to watch out for their tails, because uh, if you're not paying attention, <laughs> what just happened to me will happen to you. Uh, these guys cause a bit of grief in this area. They're they're pretty pretty rough. And I'm really learning to love the uh, knife special because, uh, like, <laughs> even on normal playthrough, you'd have some uh, DPS power ups for the whip by now, but not 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 here. So here's another kind of non-linear area. We've got to go around and unlock here some stuff here. And there's several uh, items on this screen, I think, but we're not going to get any of them because they're just, you know, cheese. This is so much MacGuffin hunting in Castlevania Gate. Yeah, here's pretty a, much every second. Here's some cheese. There's some more cheese elsewhere. I can't believe I actually dodged that uh, bone. That was very close. Kill. 
doing some very pro dodges on the screen all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, maybe death won't be too bad after all. Oh, and to get the uh, item over here, you gotta turn that on and go back the other way, but whatever. And that guy just couldn't really do much because he got stuck on the stairs, but it's okay. That poor sword knight did not deserve that. Okay, and you're gonna fight some peepy guys in very close quarters here. Helps if you can and get them on top of each other. Not too hard, uh, but again, uh, as we were talking about during Menace, uh, the timing on Claire's uh, whip juggle is much harder than it might appear at first glance. I'd actually be surprised if somebody could do uh, do it on their first time through without uh, much practice. And uh, going back through this screen, he's added some, you know, traps just to make it a bit more fun. More fun. And uh, I haven't actually mentioned it, but uh, there are a bunch of uh, candles you can whip for hearts throughout this gate. Uh, they're just kind of here because it's a fun thing to have in Castlevania. You will not see them in the rest of the game, unfortunately. <laughs> Very unfortunately in this case. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, you gotta ride this uh, spike chandelier up here. Oh, fan. So much for quick break, but... So much for quick brain machine strats, huh? Oh yeah. So there was a nice full uh, whip juggle I did there. You're uh, probably not going to be able to do that. Yeah, basically is what we were saying. Okay, so watch out for this guy. This screen is ver basically being uh, very observant, pays off, because uh, there's some traps up there. Uh, if you get on that, that you actually need uh, some sort of uh, movement upgrade to get on there, because you can't just dash to it. Uh, it takes you to a secret area with some uh, fun little goodies that you're probably going to want, so remember that for when you're playing this game normally and not, you know, in the worst way possible. <laughs> I, I, I'm kidding. I have a lot. Of, I'm having a lot of fun with Nightmare Mode so far. It's just uh, definitely not something you want to do as a first-time player. So, which is why he obviously locks it until you've beaten the game. Oh yeah, that actually reminds me because they actually said it. Uh, they said it with um, in a stream earlier that I watched with Kefa. Yeah. You can actually get there without the air dash. Oh really? Do uh, yes. you need like a bomb jump with Jerry or something? The uh, reverse Jerry dash. It's I, if I recall, it's very silly. It involves like I believe uh, it involves like Jerry. I believe it's about. I don't. I don't remember if it actually involves enemy bouncing. The people in chat can probably remember it, but it's very very silly looking. Oh, and the platforming here reminds me that I should mention, uh, Waffle and I were kind of wrong about Mario Gate with Claire. It turns out, uh, she actually does make some screens much easier because she has a wider, uh, hitbox to bounce on Koopas with. And her uh, increased X, uh, X axis, uh, movement speed also allows her to skip some cycles that Jerry cannot. So, uh, Waffle and I made the assumptions. They were not correct assumptions. I'm sorry. There's going to be someone watching this that already took that advice to heart and did it. Yeah, uh, so I encourage you not to take everything we say as gospel. We know a lot about the game, but we're not masters. We've only played through it once. So, And uh, there's a pit there. It might look like the science pit from earlier, but don't jump in there. You're going to die. Oh, yeah, that's it. It's like you. So you leave the bottom part of the breakable wall there so you can jump oh, higher. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. I, I would have liked to try that if, uh, you know, there were anything for us to get. But there's not. All in this world is just cheese. Yep. Oh, and these guys are actually resistant to knives. I did not realize that. 
Another kind of kill corridor. I, I like that one. It's, it's got a nice uh, combination of enemies, I think. And if you uh, hit the uh, bone pillars with the flames, they only take two hits to kill, which is nice. This is kind of a hard uh, pot to break. That's, there we go. <laughs> Oh, and uh, you may notice that enemies can, in fact, drop health, but since enemies don't respawn on screens, it's in your best interest to not try farming health from enemies. There uh, is a talent in the uh, Metroid gate that you can get. No, is it in the Metroid gate, or is it in the RPG gate? No, the Metroid one is, uh, is money, I believe. The RPG gate one increases item drops. So here's a quote from Ralco during his LP that Zephyr added here because he found it amusing. And he put it along with the checkpoint. So up next is death. So I'm going to take a bathroom break. And then we'll see how poorly that goes. <sighs> death is going to be exciting. Hope everyone is excited for death. All right, it's time for uh, what is kind of the showcase fight of the early game in DT3, let's say. So, uh, Wafu... You can say that? Yeah, Wafu, you want to kind of talk about this guy while I actually fight him? Uh, I, sure. You kind of need to focus a bit. So, death is kind of the first dual fight as it is, and uh, much of the fight is uh, him kind of mind-gaming you. So basically, he has uh, three specific tells before each attack he does. His, uh, his both arms on the scythe and ho holding it in, you know, it diagonal is uh, the horizontal swing. And uh, where he kind of looks far away is where he does the big room swing. And uh, the uh, where he looks up is the next to him swing. Now, all of these attacks actually have responses that don't involve dashing, and except for the far away swing. But uh, it's not obvious right away, and kind of Death's big uh, barrier to learning him is the fact that, one, Death does not want you to get far away from him in any way. The farther away you get from him, the larger range that he gets. And two that if you actually do dash spam him, like uh, you will probably do the first time you see him, you're gonna run out of dashes and you're gonna get pulverized for it. So basically the way that you go through death is that you learn what each attack uh, proper response is and you rack them accordingly. And then you preserve dashes for the far away attack or when you need them in phase two when he gets really, really fast. And he also has a Scythe and Maku interlude, which is kind of, you know, is what it is. You know, 
you're you're kind of going to take a while to learn it, but then when you do learn it, it's pretty second nature. Yeah, I actually screwed it up because I was uh, nervous for streaming, but it's okay. We got it now. <laughs> Basically, like, death is, for the most part, death is, is a very specific call and response to each tell that he does. And, uh, well, it is very intimidating. You act, and you will probably think that you'll run out of dashes. You don't need to if you just uh, memorize each tell. Because pretty much every playthrough I've seen that goes through this, uh, this learning period where they think they have to dash, but they don't, and run out of dashes. <sighs> that went much better because I actually practiced this beforehand. I'm not good at that boss. I spent about 30 minutes fighting him with lowest possible DPS in the boss gallery for this. And uh, his second phase is, you know, I, I guess it, it, it kind of exists. I'm not really sure. Oh, Quaff uh, said he never got to scan this guy. So let's look at this for Quaff. Blah, 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 blah. Uh... Okay, so Zephyr has no explanation for why this boss is so, you know, bad. But the hearts did respawn, so let's go get that. Uh, so I don't honestly know why Legion exists, to be totally honest. <laughs> this, this boss just existence kind of confuses the shit out of me, if I'm being honest. And I'm actually kind of doing badly because I don't know how to fight it. Because uh, the actual Stratford is just walking forward and firing holy waters at it, but you don't have enough to do that, so we gotta kind of, you know, improvise. And on a normal playthrough, all you really do is you walk forward and dump holy waters into him, and he dies, and he throws kind of slightly, slightly, you know, big projectiles that you walk into for no reason. Yeah. And uh, but uh. I don't know, like, the first time you see the second phase, you're probably going to shit yourself because, like, I just went through all that and now I have to do something else. But once you realize you both, you get a checkpoint and, you know, Legion doesn't really do anything so except, you, like, throw giant projectiles at you. So you can get negative hearts from the nice special, by the way. I just did. Holy shit, what? <laughs> Never seen that before. Uh, I have to wonder if that's you know intentional or not because it doesn't seem intentional. Does that mean that you can use the knife special even when you don't have the hearts required for it? Uh, that must mean that, it right? It seems like there's some lower threshold, like 20 knives or something, and you end up going uh, down to like negative 10 when you use it. It's weird. I'm not really sure. How the, I'll, I'll ask Zephyr if that's intended behavior later. Because, you know, that's something you can do. You can ask Zephyr if that's intended behavior. <laughs> and that's the Castlevania game. So I'm not going to lie. I was very worried about death. He is one of my worst bosses in the game. But it goes to show that practicing beforehand pays off. And by the way, even with absolute lowest DPS I can get on my other file, I was still doing way more. Like 30, uh, I was doing 134 with uh, maximum low DPS and here I was doing uh, 105, so there's a big difference, even uh, just playing the game normally. Did you know that you can actually get Death's Gold time with no damage items? Really? I, I guess that requires playing absolutely perfectly. And as you can see, <laughs> uh, I think we're only ever going to get one or two more heart containers, so uh, the game is going to start getting real hard real soon. And uh, I guess we'll go ahead and advance some events here, uh, and uh, then we can go back and do the Zelda Nightmare Gate. So uh, Quaff tells me that uh, it seems that the knife special can be used the moment you have enough hearts to throw one knife. Ah, uh, and uh, that makes sense. So I, I guess that that is probably intentional behavior. Then, if he actually coded for it to go negative. Or, I mean, who knows, maybe it just goes negative because you didn't think of that. I feel like the game would crash if it wasn't intended behavior, yeah. like reading a number that it wasn't supposed to. Yeah, pro probably. So th that's something we'll have to keep in mind, though, because I can't imagine that being very useful against, you know, Warmaster. Yeah. 
so uh, I'm actually kind of reading through the cutscene here to make sure I know where I'm supposed to go next. I believe, okay, X went out west. So we're going to Mega Man Gate next, but not right yet. Not right now, because first we have to go clean up some unfinished business. And uh, I'm going to show off one thing real quick. So I showed this off earlier, but uh, now that I can dash, I'm showing you how I actually, you know, did the strat for killing this thing. Basically, I would uh, hit it five times, wait for the cookies to come through, and then dash back and forth like that. And that conveniently allows me to unlock another achievement, which is the dash dance, because, you know, <laughs> gotta have some achievements. <laughs> oh, now you can actually see the big difference in Jerry's dash. Right. For the uh, most part. So, as you can see, Jerry's dash is basically straight out of Mega Man X. He dashes uh, straight close to the ground, does not leave the ground at all, uh, or forward or back. So, it's very useful. And there's a kind of maybe semi-intentional technique you can do. If you uh, jump and back dash at the same time, you get some insane distance. You can use it to get a few items early. It's it's not really an intentional technique or anything you need, but it can be fun to do and uh, good to know. I actually largely prefer Jerry Stash for boss fights if I have the choice between it and Claire's. You're just you're not in the animation for nearly as long. And you can cancel it much sooner than you can Claire's. And, like, Jerry's is so ridiculous to the point where, like, you almost have iframes for the whole duration. So as you can see, this is a recommended uh, seven hearts. We have, you know, a good six, but that's enough, right? Yeah. I mean, we're not getting much more, so... And uh, I cannot use Dash here because this is a uh, uh, Zelda Gate uh, era let's say. And I cannot switch to Claire either, so Claire is going to go away for a while. So, this first room is uh, a very long endurance test for the most part. You have to go around, you have to collect four keys to unlock the door out, and you have to do that in one in one go, in one life. And, uh, let's just say, come here with the recommended hearts before you do, before yeah. you do this. You, uh, Generally, you are going to actually want the recommended hearts. Like, Zephyr is not kidding around when he, when he put that stat on the screen. It's, it's like, like, don't try and say, oh, I'm hardcore, I can do this. You, you probably can't. And, uh, I, I've done this before, so I know how to do it, but, uh, it's, it's not for these newcomers, because this is way harder than anything in the Zelda gate or Mario gate up to that point. Even if you did the Mario Nightmare Gate, you're going to have a hard time here. I would say this stage is generally harder than most of the Castlevania Gate as well. Yeah. They're Nightmare Gates for a reason, basically. Yeah. And as you can see, I have one of four keys I need to get through here. So let's drop down and try and find some more. No oh boy, the Castlevania Nightmare Gate. Oh boy. <laughs> Castlevania Nightmare Gate I actually didn't have too much trouble with. Uh, one of the nice things about it is the boss is rather easy. Don't diss on Blackmore. Well, Blackmore is fun, but uh, he's pretty easy. Like, Blackmore is one of the hardest bosses in Ecclesia, but... And here, I, I think he kind of, he lives up to Ecclesia, but he's still not hard in the scheme of things. Because, you know, DT3 is just kind of a hard game. Oh, God. And uh, this is where knowing Jerry's hitbox comes in handy because you can run under these fireballs. Oh, and I didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. That seems very intentional in yeah. the way that those flames are positioned and how you can run under them cleanly with Jerry. And you got a bomb jump. Oh, yeah. I, I, I showed that off earlier in an area I didn't need to do it in, but... Okay, so I don't need to rotate this just yet, so... Oh, <laughs> I cannot believe I dodged that. That is some sick dodging. Oh, and I completely lost track of his projectile because there is another projectile on screen, so... That's the main annoyance with these guys, is, you know, actually making sure you don't <laughs> do what I just did. Ah, well, and there you can see that where the challenge of this room comes from. You have to do this all in one go. 
And I just, I definitely did not do this all in one go. So let's jump down here and see what's, uh, what's over here. Oh, oh, that's sad. Yeah. Okay. As a note, on a normal playthrough, you can have the fire elemental shield, and it'll give you some buffer room with the projectiles. Because let me tell you, the projectiles here, they suck. They do like eight damage or something. Yeah. It's very brutal. The projectiles here hurt. They hurt bad. Okay, we're gonna clear out that. We got hit there, but okay. We're gonna clear out that firebird first, cause he, he can dick you over later. Let's say. Okay, now we can go up to the top left here, and this is the actual uh, efficient way of doing this room anyway. So it's probably good that I died. Okay, I did not time that correctly, but I was able to save it. That's that's good. Okay. Oh, that was a nice twitch dodge. And I missed that, so I'm gonna have to go back around. But that's okay. This is a it's a pretty brutal introduction to the nightmare gate. It's a very long. Jet, like room that you have to go through all in one chunk. Yeah. And it's covered with these fire projectiles that just basically cream you if you get hit by one. So we're gonna have to take another trip around because I missed uh, the switch up there, but that's okay. Oh. Try not to stand in place while fireballs come at you. That's uh, my pro tip for DT3. So basically, I think the kind of the challenge with this area comes from you know keeping track of how many projectiles are coming at you all at once, and along with the enemies, it's uh, definitely kind of a, a ramp up in difficulty, like we've been saying. There's uh, interesting enough, like all the enemies located in this first room, especially, are all projectile based as well. Yeah. Let's see, where does this lead? Okay, that leads back up uh, past the uh, the Firebird. So we don't... We're going to leave this on rotate, then rotate it and go back around, basically. <sighs> it's okay. He dropped a heart. We're good. <laughs> Note that these do uh, five damage, and uh, you hit... Uh, you get four HP back from a heart, so we're not actually fine, but we're, we're semi-fine, let's say. And normally they would be doing like, you know, four or three damage even if you had the, uh, uh, everything equipped to, uh, deal with them, but... <laughs> yeah. You get nothing of the sort. Yeah. And now we can go down through here because we rotated the gear, and... Basically, you're doing some tight jumps over and over. You gotta time it. And this room is actually a bit more generous than I thought because it gives you basically a pot with a heart in it in every uh, uh, little, let's say, al alcove with a key. So that's nice of it. And uh, one thing to note when you're jumping on springs like that and uh, Mario enemies, just like in Mario you, Mario, you hold down the jump button to get some extra height. For some reason, that's a thing a lot of people actually don't realize when they're playing this. Uh, but yeah, it works just like Mario. You hold hold, hold the jump button and you get some extra height. And oh my god, they did a fucking lot of damage. Holy shit. It's, uh, it's the number one cause of helmet head deaths, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Eight damage. <laughs> yeah. Eight damage is, uh, that's two hearts, basically, so... Playing real safe here, but that's okay. Uh, you're right here with like all the keys already. This is the last time, yeah. last place you want a spaghetti. Yeah, it's okay. We're good. This firebird is uh, giving you some trouble. <laughs> it's okay. I, I was just playing it real slow. 
Uh, and this is actually nice enough to kind of refill all your hearts at the end. That's not bad. So now we're on to, you know, the actual Nightmare Gate. That was just the intro. Yes. And uh, the menu teleport function. Uh, Jeremy can teleport you out of areas if, you know, you're having too much trouble. And you, like I said, you do want to do the Nightmare Gates, but uh, you can always come back with more hearts. There's nothing stopping you from doing them at any point in the game. So uh, it's perfectly legitimate uh, to uh, come back to them later because the game does not stop that and, in fact, encourages it even. So they're, they're going to push you, but uh, just remember that there is some leeway here. But uh, on Nightmare Mode, that doesn't really matter anyway, so we're just going to, you know, kind of tank everything. I would recommend you do them in era as close as you can, just yeah. because uh, the harder stuff at the end of this game, the warship in particular, is much harder than anything you will find in these gates, and it's uh, practice, let's say. So I really mistimed my bomb there and did a death I don't I don't think I ever actually saw before, so that's, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. And yeah, these fireballs are doing eight damage, so we're we're gonna kind of reset if we get hit. That's just how it's gonna have to go for this screen because this is another long screen. Uh, all the screens in this gate are long and grueling. Basically, is the word I'd say grueling. There we go. That's actually kind of tight. You probably want to come down here and you know kill the tech tight ahead of time, but whatever. We're we're playing on nightmare. We don't need. Pussy strats like that. And here's the skull balls. They have 5,000 HP. You can kill them if you hit them, you know, 50 times. I'm actually going to kill this one just to demonstrate. Hold on. Bear with me here. Why? <laughs> and, uh, because you get an achievement for doing it, Wafu. This poor skull ball did not deserve this. Thirty AP. We didn't get thirty AP. We got no AP, in fact. So I'm just gonna ignore those enemies. They can go over there and spam their projectiles all they want. I have. You just row cow through them. Yep. Hey, I didn't actually get hit by them. Well, I, I kind of did, but we're gonna ignore that. So this might actually be kind of hard with the bomb radius I have. Let's see if I can actually. Okay, that's never mind. Okay, I call this part, I want to be the Jerry, and you can probably see why. <laughs> and actually, this is very easy if you're used to fighting the optional boss. One of the optional bosses, so that's good to know. Oh, and uh, you cannot go back and get more pots, so you're, you're stuck with the HBF going into this screen. And you might remember these lovely things with uh, Dylan, but it's much easier here. So, well, it's it's harder, but it's easier to figure out what you're supposed to do. So let's let's put it that way. Uh, this room. And you can so just, much fire. You can just walk under all this. It's it's pretty cool. Oh, you, if you fall down here, you have to kill yourself. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> So yeah, I was doing this uh, room the wrong way anyway. So why didn't why didn't you bomb jump? Oh, uh, I guess you can bomb jump. I didn't think to do that. That's that, that would also be a viable strategy here. Okay. Actually, you might not go high enough. I don't know. Do it again. Okay, Wafu. I'll I'll try it again just for you. Oh, and the bomb. Kind of phased into the wall there. That's, that sometimes happens. It's a bit annoying. Oh, you, you can make it out just fine, yeah. Zephyr actually uh, added a new fix that makes uh, some of the projectiles... Uh, uh, what, what would it... Okay, I did this way this wrong again. I swear this room is easy, right? Okay. <laughs> So uh, Claire had a thing where some of her projectiles would uh, uh, get absorbed by the wall 
and he fixed that, but apparently did not fix the bombs doing the same thing, which is saddening. Let's see. Uh, it was mostly uh, a problem. I think the reason it was fixed is because of Wex, for the most part. Right. Because uh, his uh, third super involves uh, shooting upwards with the spacer. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that would do it. Okay, so... Kevin, yeah, don't listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess the name doesn't really tell him anything, honestly. I'm not sure this is what you're supposed to do, but this is what I'm going <laughs> to try to do. Wow. <laughs> Let's wait for that cycle on the flames. There's no way that's intentional. <laughs> this is going to be cool if it works, though. I'm expecting this to work. Cause... I don't remember how the, you do this normally. Yeah, but. that's why I'm doing this. That was awesome. And the arrow didn't fire for some reason. Okay, that's definitely not the way you're supposed to do this, but... Uh... Oh, I know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put the bomb up here. <laughs> I'm retarded. <laughs> okay, so I said this was not as complicated as Dylan, but I was trying to make it out as out to be that complicated. Dylan's revenge. And there's yeah. other Nightmare Gate, too. So this is an example of the dead zone uh, not functioning uh, in a consistent way with the rest of the game. This sometimes happens, and I'm not really big a fan of how it happens, but it's okay. It's It doesn't really affect any combat or whatever, so I can deal with it. Okay, I finally huh. <laughs> managed to get through here. And I took a hit at the end, but that's okay, because... <laughs> yeah, so uh, you might think there might be something secret there, but no, if you fall on those spikes, you're just going to die, so... Uh, don't don't let curi Curious get the better of you. Sometimes science is not rewarded. Yes. Okay, and uh, I, this area is a whole lot more... Uh, Co uh, less complicated than it looks, but I kind of forgot how you're supposed to do it, so let's figure it out. Uh, okay, so first you're gonna have to turn this. Okay. I feel like everyone who's played this game has a reference in it by now. Probably. I mean, well, everybody who has played them played it and uh, you know streamed themselves doing so, recorded themselves doing so. Let's say. Okay, so this is a pretty easy thing, all things considered. Might be a little hard, you know, the lack of bomb radius upgrades. But <laughs> okay. Oh lord. Okay, I can make it uh, hit there with some momentum. That's no big deal. So yeah, when I first saw that playing the game, I was expecting some sort of really elaborate puzzle, and I kind of uh, mind game myself, uh, making it way harder yeah. than it had to be. That's exactly what happened to me too. I'm sacred here. Oh, hello, sacred. Uh, maybe one day you'll see this if you ever get past Helmet Head. Oh, and what that thing does—the uh, fireball actually activates the thing, the switch for you. 
I'm not sure if that actually happens in Zelda or not, but it happens several times in uh, DT3. And DT3 is the important game. Yep. Okay. So we might be able to see what we're trying to do here, which is guide these fireballs uh, over to the switch so they can activate it. And that's what we did. And it's I, a shame that all those Sacred's memes have to be about him being bad at video games. Yeah. So I believe this is the last screen, maybe. I'm not really sure, but... I'm actually kind of appreciating this design uh, now that I come back to it after, you know, 70 hours. It's still pretty hard. It's uh, distinct from the rest of the game. Uh, and that's one thing DT3 does really well, is that pretty much everything in the game is very distinct. Uh, despite having the same, you know, basic set of uh, uh, actions, I guess you could say. Uh, I think this is the last screen, yeah. yeah. Okay, you can't actually cut that with Jerry, so I'm not sure what I was trying to do. Okay. So basically the idea here is we're using... Uh, or combining both the gears and the uh, red-blue switches to go around and unlock the, the doors leading to the exit. And on screens like this, you can actually help to go through and just, you know, kind of kill all the enemies off first. Because, spoilers, there's going to be some other long puzzle screens later on where you want to... where you really want to go through and kill the enemies. And uh, here's a neat thing. It kind of brings back this mechanic from the Mario Gate where you have to make shortcuts uh, so you can get around in ways you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Okay, one more Doom Knocker over here. And... Uh, soon we get to introduce everyone to basketball. Oh yeah, basketball is coming up next, in fact. <laughs> it's a, It's a thing. So you might try to, you might be tempted to try to lob a bomb down here, but it's never going to happen, so don't, don't even try. And uh, when you're going up like that, it's actually easier to just continue holding left or right so Jerry keeps running instead of, you know, trying to actually, uh, uh, actually duck, because ducking takes a couple of frames, I think. Mm -hmm. Ice said that this might be his favorite Nightmare Gate, which got me thinking what my favorite is. Do you have a favorite Nightmare Gate? Uh, I like the Mega Man X Nightmare Gate, I'm going to have to say. Because the Mega Man X Gate in general is my favorite uh, part of the game. Well, not part of the game, but favorite gate. Actually, I'm not sure. I'd probably say the My Mega Man Nightmare Gate, even though it kind of traumatized me too. It traumatized me in a horrible way. <laughs> so... Yes, I want to go back up and uh, turn off the red switch so I can get through here. As you can see, this is kind of building on the concepts from the uh, Zelda gate, but in a much uh, much more demanding uh, context execution-wise. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool gate, all things considered. This room is very smooth, I like it. Very intuitive to kind of figure out where you have to go despite the uh, seemingly complex mechanics. As you can see, you just keep running against the wall with Jerry there and it's not going to hit you. Kind of took a risk there, but that's okay. Okay, there's Mr. Doom Knocker. I'm going to get rid of him. Oh, wait, I actually take it back. My favorite Nightmare Gate is the Vault. Vault Nightmare Gate is some pro platforming, I have to say. <laughs> I really enjoy uh, the platforming challenges in that gate. Wow, this it is, is a bit, It's a bit of a shame about the boss, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, the, boss in, uh, the bosses in some of the Nightmare Gates are a bit unimpressive, we, perhaps we could say. But mainly the uh, Vault Nightmare Gate and uh, Metroid Nightmare Gate. Uh, they're just... They're, I, I guess the Castlevania Nightmare Gate's boss isn't too great either. Uh, but 
let's just say the RPG Nightmare Gate boss makes up for it. Well, I think uh, Blackmore is fine mechanically and like from a fun perspective, but Nightmare is just really easy and really a big letdown, honestly. Yeah, Nightmare, I think, that's one of the areas where I think actually making him significantly harder would have been justified. Like, uh, like uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind with, when making a hard game is that making everything as hard as possible for the sake of it isn't really the best idea. Uh, you want to give the player some leniency and you want to keep things reasonable, but I think for Nightmare, the boss, he, 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 kept, he kept things too reasonable, let's say. Okay, so here's a boss that I'm not going to like, so I'm going to go uh, take a brief uh, break and get right back. <laughs> And now we're here at Final Nightmare. Oh, y'all are excited. So... I'm not sure how this boss is going to work with such low DPS and no arrows. But... So guys, who's your favorite basketball player? Because mine is Jerry. That was horrible. Oh, and this is actually not at the boss yet. This is the uh, <laughs> obligatory wall tile puzzle. So I, I took a little early break, but that's okay. Oh shit, I forgot about this. <laughs> so did I. But uh, this All is... the un unpleasant memories. I feel like this is probably actually hell on earth on Achilles. Yeah, I'm taking a lot of hits, uh, so let's try that again and not, you know, spaghetti this time. This is another mechanic that shows up in, you know, I, uh, I want to be the guy fan games a lot. I'm fairly used to this sort of thing by now, but uh, wasn't expecting it, so it kind of took me off guard there for a sec. Uh, basically what you want to do here is not fall into the spikes, and you're going to want to keep an eye on uh, the redness level because the ones that are red are gonna fly at you if i had hadn't fallen on the spikes here i could actually just tank that at the end but so yeah again my advice do not fall on the spikes because spikes are bad <laughs> and they do not have a hitbox when they're first rising up so you want to use that to your advantage Is it that their collision only starts when they get fully red and start firing? Yeah. Like, can you, like if you're they're like pink, can you just stand on them? So, so I believe uh, Neil on Discord said this is one of the hardest rooms in Achilles so far. He's been doing an Achilles run, and uh, yeah, it seems like it would be. So, uh, one thing I'll show up real quick here. This is a portal back to the start of the gate. You can actually leave the gate all the way come back in and the portals of the boss is still there so if you find that a nightmare boss is too hard for you you can also come back uh, to it with more hearts later but hopefully we're not going to have to do that here <laughs> so we have determination so uh 
If you have max DPS, you can kill this guy's first phase before he does anything at all. And, and as such, I have no idea what his first phase does anymore. <laughs> Okay, and he's actually uh, resistant to uh, arrows at this point. Okay, so here's the fucking basketball. <laughs> so yeah, Final Nightmare's first phase is uh, he doesn't really have too many attacks. He just kind of uh, you know wiggles his arms around. This is the um, uh, the joke with this boss. Let's say. This is um, the horror. <laughs> uh, we have dubbed this uh, basketball for uh, reasons that are probably pretty obvious. Um, this uh, is pr this is gonna take you a pretty long time to do. Let's just say the first time you get here. Yeah, I'm gonna retry until I can get there with uh, out taking a hit. Cause I, when I beat basketball, I don't wanna you know have to redo basketball. Let's see. Uh, I got some setups where I can do it pretty consistently, but uh, with with uh, full damage items, you can you only need uh, three bombs, and then he's out of the phase. Yeah, we don't have full damage items though, so so this is a very 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 precise Jerry juggle. Do not attempt that at home. Uh, this Jerry juggle is uh, very rough. Let's say you have to make sure that you don't bonk into him as you. Uh, you know, you juggle onto him, which means hitting it. Which means hitting the button, not when you normally would, but when the sword is, like, at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, so we can get past this first phase without too much trouble, even with this low DPS. That's good to know. And I have no idea how many hits this is going to take, so we might be here for a while. Okay. And uh, it's not over. It's not over. No, so, that was way off. So uh, once you lay three bombs in him normally, he then uh, goes uh, into turbo basketball moto and uh, starts, you know, just rocketing his projectiles, become faster, more frequent, and uh, he just switches positions, way more awkward. And as you can tell, the uh, the platforms are either gone or have spikes on. So, I have no idea how to hit him at this point. We're gonna be here for a while. I should have practiced this beforehand, uh, like I did <laughs> death. That's, that's my bad. So close. So you can actually hit him without bouncing against the wall for that point. Okay. Oh, that was really close. Ah, so close. <laughs> Basketball grinding. <laughs> okay, I got one hit. That's, that's something, isn't it? Two hits. Oh, that was good. So, okay, this might not be as bad as I feared. You're <laughs> actually using something similar to my setups. Actually, almost exactly my setups. I mean, this is probably basically ideal. Okay, so we got past basketball, thank God. Okay, so... So, this guy... Yeah. Phase 3 is the, uh, the hardest part for most people, I think. Because uh, when he attacks and his uh, tells are not obvious at all, and uh, involves keeping a very careful position around him so you don't get hit by his arms or his gun. He's also, as you may have guessed, only vulnerable when his eye is open. And yeah. I got kind of trapped into the corner there, that's okay. Also, uh, this face is gated behind uh, basketball, so. Yeah. So. I got to the fourth phase. Let's see how we can do. So, 
So, uh, this is mostly just a Jerry Juggle test, for the most part, if you're, uh... And you just, uh, fly like a bird <laughs> on his face. Okay, the joke with that, uh, final phase is it's the hardest boss from DT1, or one of the hardest bosses. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, that, that is Shroud Lord. Yeah. From the EPT one. That is Shroud Lord. Shroud Lord is a boss that Zephyr regrets making because he cannot beat it on the highest difficulty or he cannot at the time. And it's kind of influenced his, uh, uh, his uh, des design philosophy for bosses in the future because so, he regrets making a boss that he himself cannot beat on the highest difficulty, basically. And it's kind of a little throwback to it there. Uh, it's, it's meant to freak you out if you play DT1. And it's it's at the end of a rather long and kind of taxing fight, and I'm very glad I got through it first try with uh, pretty optimal Jerry Juggles. So uh, that that actually kind of took a lot of money, but but uh, how long have we been recording, Wafu? Uh, hour eighteen, about. Okay, so uh, I think we might go up to the uh, the Mega Man Gate then, yeah, and not do it, but just you know, kind of unlock it. Because that went much better than I was expecting. I was actually expecting to be walled on a Final night Nightmare there. He was uh, one of the harder bosses for me on my first time through. It took me a good, uh, you know, like 30 plus minutes of tries to beat him. And uh, I'm proud of myself, let's say, for doing him so well here. Because like it's as Wafu says, the... Uh, the third and fourth phases are gated behind uh, basketball, so if you can't do basketball very well, it's just, oh, it's awful. Let's say it's uh, it's it's hard to progress on on it. Let's say because uh, you have to eventually learn how to do basketball in such a way that you can constantly see phase three and four. Yeah. Well, phase four you are more than likely going to do on your second try. The, fir the first time you see it, it'll probably freak you out. You'll run into a laser and die. But Yeah, uh, the the fourth form, uh, even if you haven't played DT1, you're probably just not going to know what's going on. Like, it's all very easy to actually dodge, but the whole freak out of it, the, bo the bar suddenly refilling, and uh, I'm going back here to get a teleporter, by the way. Don't, uh, don't freak out. Uh, but the whole bar suddenly refilling and all that, it's, it's, it's enough to mess with your head. And that's one thing Zephyr is actually pretty good at, is messing with your head. There's a lot of sections throughout the game that kind of uh, uh, make you uncomfortable uh, with uh, the current situation, let's say. Yeah. Even some survival horror sections. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Can't wait for that section. Okay, I don't think the portal is on this screen, but it's on the next screen, yeah. I got the cheese. Yeah. I'm not even sure what that item is in the actual game, but... Okay. Yeah, uh, you need to jump to get up here and get the portal. So... It's time to explore a new part of the world map. And let's see, did I talk to... Oh, let's uh, actually check out one of the records. Uh, bird Scene, 2041. So there are a lot of birds in this game, and we'll later be getting an achievement for seeing enough birds, because I said uh, Zephyr really loves him some birds. Did you know there is actually a bird that if you find it, it crashes the game? <laughs> yeah, and if you look at his YouTube channel, there are videos of him feeding birds by, you know, uh, tossing uh, tossing uh, bread, I think, at them, and they're catching it. And we kind of make it a joke that was going to be in DT3. Sadly, it wasn't. So this I mean, is... Go ahead. So this is a piranha plant named Petroleum, which is kind of weird. Makes me think he might have named it against uh, after someone from like a forum or something. And uh, this is a businessman. He's telling us a barrier was unlocked. And uh, one thing I might want to show off here. Uh, no, 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 this one. But uh, occasionally, uh, uh, Chow will actually tell you where a given sprite is from with, when you scan an enemy. Let's see. 
not on that one either. I know there's one in here where she mentions that it's from Wonder Boy. And uh, I actually kind of wish that Zephyr had uh, done that for all the enemies, because I'm actually kind of curious where some of the sprites in this game are from. He credits all the uh, rippers in the end credits, but he doesn't actually mention the game itself. The, uh, so, this actually world map area is in largely uh, made to get you acquainted with the idea that you're going to have to switch between Jerry and Claire, to, depending on the situation. And uh, this is kind of the first time that that's being introduced to you. So, many of these enemies have very differing weaknesses. Yeah, I actually because... kind of forgot I could play as Claire right now. So uh, that op opens up a nice little shortcut here. Because, uh, as you can imagine, Jerry has access to explosive and Claire has access to elemental. Yeah. So one thing I'm going to actually wanted to check out is uh, the swap types. Uh, originally, just to swap between uh, Jerry and Claire, you had one button for that. And to swap between uh, item uh, weapon sets, you had another button for that. But he's had some more options for that. Uh, you can read the text on the screen, I'm not going to bother explaining it. But there's three different sets, and uh, this one kind of works like Devil May Cry 3 or 4 style switching. Oh, and let's, I'm actually kind of curious how it works. Oh, at the moment we only have uh, just the two uh, weapon sets anyway, so it, it just uh, works as normal. So. But I, I'm going to leave this on for now, though, because I actually kind of think it might be useful for the way I have my controls set up. So, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you have comments about this, Wafu? Uh, I actually think that the uh, DMC one might actually be the best one in terms of pure efficiency uh, in the end. But, you know, I, I'm obviously programmed to do it the normal way after 200 hours of it. Yeah. But if I were to play the game again, I think I would probably use the DMC one. So I'm not going to go over there yet. I want to show off a kind of fun mechanic down yeah. here. It's also currently it's also currently fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, the cooldown time for switching between characters does not work properly with the DMC style. So you can just kind of uh, it it doesn't work properly when you switch directly to another weapon set is what it does. So you can kind of spam shit infinitely. Here's the cannon from Secret of Mana. You get in it, and woohoo! It's a kind of fun looking. Is that is that what that's from? I actually yeah. good catch. I didn't know that. So I'm gonna try and get an achievement. I'm not sure you can get on nightmare mode. You get an achievement for collecting all of the coins here, but since you cannot collect coins, I'm not actually sure if that's gonna. Uh, oh yeah. Damn. Gonna be possible to get. It, it'd be easier to test if it keep falling off, but you know. That's how these things work. I don't see how it would because it doesn't count them as ever leaving. I don't know, maybe you just kind of tied it to each tile. Let's find out. This is ultimate achievement science. <laughs> okay, so we cannot get that achievement on Nightmare. So that means it's not possible to get all the achievements on Nightmare. Uh, I think. If Zephyr ever watches this, I'd actually like for that to be changed, because I, I would like for you to be able to get all achievements regardless of the mode you're playing. It's, it's I mean, it's not a big deal, but I, I, that's something I'd personally like to see. And... Alright, here's our first uh, elite enemy, let's say. These guys have a, a kind of hilarious name. Uh, we'll see when he gets down and can actually scan him. Uh, these guys. So, there's two of them. You won't see the other one for a while, I don't think. And, uh, they're... They're interesting, let's say. They have some uh, obvious exploits that you can abuse uh, later, once you know it. But, uh... Yeah, here's a Zephyr explaining the elite thing, so if you, want, you can read this. And these guys are called Blood Tyrants, which I find to be a hilarious name. <laughs> Blood Tyrants? No, it's funny that he says this is the first, first of an elite group, but as far as I'm aware, there's only two types. Uh, the oozes also count as elite types. Oh, really? Okay, I actually didn't know that. That's, that's appropriate, because fuck the oozes. The oozes are, there's only a few of them, but 
Uh, they're the hardest normal enemy, enemy in the game by far. They they're basically each a midi a mid boss by themselves. We do they're not... gonna be a full boss on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, as you can see, when I was fighting the blood tyrant there, you get a lot of stun lock on him, and after he does his super move. Uh, He's uh, uh, 2x vulnerable to elemental, so if I had actually been able to fire these off quicker, I would have killed him there, but I kind of messed up the timing. No big deal. Uh, but yeah, basically those guys are about kind of learning the timing to stun lock them and knowing to tell for their dive bomb. A little intimidating at first, but they're in a mostly controlled environment here, and you shouldn't have too much trouble just taking out one. As a note, in my experience, Claire fucking bulldozes them. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah, uh, you definitely want to use Claire for those guys. Uh, she makes short work of them. Of course, there are a few situations where you have to use Jerry to fight them, but that's uh, <laughs> far off. 60 hours away, I would say. <laughs> yeah, give or take. Getting some Jerry juggles, because... Uh, those guys are much easier to hit with the Master Sword if they're in range, because, you know, it has basically a semicircle in front of Jerry as opposed to <laughs> the uh, special whip hitbox. And there's some <laughs> items up there. We're not going to get them, but, you know, cheese. And, uh, yes, even outside of the uh, uh, Castlevania Gate, there's going to be breakable walls. And you can break them with any normal type attack, which is going to be the Master Sword or Hair Whip. So it's actually easier to look through for these with Jerry because indeed he uh, hits in a semi-circle in front of him. And when you go back to Zelda Gate, uh, not Zelda Gate, Castlevania Gate, you can do that to search for the uh, hidden walls with him as well. So I recommend using Jerry in Castlevania cleanup, actually. Don't know why I'm going over here to get this cheese, but I am. <laughs> uh, Claire's hair whip hitbox is like, it's probably one of the weirder things I found to get used to when I played this game personally, especially after pl using the Master Sword for an extended period of time, because uh, it's very, very narrow. Yeah, you're going to have uh, trouble aiming at it first, let's say. So it's probably a good thing that death is always on the ground. You don't ever have to actually aim to hit him. So let's see. This is one of the ones you can get with a bomb jump, I think. Yeah. And there's a pretty wide radius for where to apply the bomb uh, jump effect. So it's easier than it looks. The, the bomb jump has lets me, or lets anyone really, it's like... You seem to be able to get upgrades a lot earlier than you can with like the combination of bomb dumping and uh, and dash jumping at the same time. It lets you really get some stuff that doesn't feel like you should be able to get, especially in the Mega Man gate. That said, this game, as far as we know, has no uh, real sequence breaks. There are a few screens you can get to early, earlier than even Zephyr intended, but you can't do anything. As far as we know, Zephyr is aware of pretty much all uh, pseudo sequence breaks with items and they're intended to be done. Yeah, there's there's nothing that you can actually skip uh, direct progress with that we've found, or you know, we haven't experimented too much with it, obviously, but there's nothing that uh, screams obviousness. Uh, like, the game is very gated behind actual, you know, cutscene gates and events and stuff like that, so even if you could get to a screen early, you'd probably just break the game horribly. And uh, this guy has a sword that I really, really, really want. And I really, really, really want these uh, boots, too. And we're never going to get them. Uh, this guy's shop is, uh, sells some pretty dank stuff, yes. let's say. Okay, so I think these guys are weak to explosion. Not sure. Actually, I could... As a note, as a note the, uh, the damage items do stack. So... Yeah. It is, uh, that's important to know. For all you Claire lovers who like to stack them on Warmaster. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is kind of, a uh, our first overworld dungeon. There's, uh, several, there's, a uh, actually quite a bit, uh, of overworld dungeons throughout the game. Many of them are optional. This is not optional. We're going in here because we need to, to advance the plot. They all kind of follow this, uh, same template of... Uh, 
being, you know, like temples with a bunch of traps in them and stuff. And uh, we're going up here first. You can go down first, but you'll just be ma met with some gates. So I know the correct way to go already. Stand on that to uh, do that, basically. <laughs> Great explanation, I know. Also, uh, I would, as you've seen, you know, because we pass over every single item, obviously. Do try to keep a mental checklist of stuff because there are a lot of stuff that is gated behind this drug chain and the morph ball in particular. You're going to see tons and tons of morph ball slots that you can get into. And yeah, so, the morph ball in particular, uh, it, it teases you throughout the entire game, let's say. And here's an example of where Jerry's low to the ground dash is very useful. Helps you get through these... Uh, these little gates before they uh, close back on you. <laughs> and occasionally those bats will run away from you instead of swooping at you. That's apparently due to a glitch in the AI, but Zephyr thought it was funny, so he kept it. <laughs> That's, is that really just a glitch? That's funny. That's yeah, hilarious. if you read the, uh, the enemy description, he says it's just a glitch, but he kept it because it's funny. Okay, so this guy. I didn't know that. That's good. That guy was not cooperating, <laughs> stepping into my bomb. How dare he, you know, not kill himself? <laughs> there we go. Oh, and I'm used to having air dash here, so I kind of took a hit there. That's okay. I think the first time I went through here, I didn't really realize he actually had dash, and I was trying to do stuff in bad ways. See if this guy will come at us. Come at me, bro, is what I would say. So this uh, screen is actually pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say that. Yes. Especially if you uh, jump directly into bats like that. Like that again. <laughs> Another thing is like knowing eventually like what dash is suited for what situation uh, really goes a long way into making the game smoother for yourself. Yeah. Oh shit, that was very close. You're hanging on by a thread here. Holy shit! <laughs> it's okay, we made it through. I really need to stop saving at the end of screens because I don't think it actually does anything. So this screen, you can end up fighting a blood tank with Jerry. We're going to try to avoid that, but I'm not sure if we can. We'll find out. This is the first non-tutorial screen where you're using both characters at once. Oh, you're going to have to do another boss. Enmity is here, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Quaff said he beat him first try, so I'm not worried. No offense to Quaff's skills or anything. but Dude, the bullying. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, uh, I, I'm sure he'll admit that he's not as good as this game as we are, so uh, knowing that he didn't have trouble with it uh, gives me hope. Okay, so uh, maybe I shouldn't have hope because I'm clearly very bad at the game myself. I mean, I have the biggest ego in the world. I cleared Wex today. Yeah, so. Uh, Wex <laughs> is the second optional boss that we've talked about. Wafu is the only person to ever beat him without assist mode. So, And in case you don't know what assist mode is, uh, assist mode is a mode available when not playing on Nightmare or Achilles. It halves all damage taken, but it makes it so enemies do not give you any sort of experience or uh, uh, money drops. So, It's like Nightmare, except uh, friendly. So I'm not really sure what the intended way to do this room is. I'm pretty sure the first time we did it, I did it very wrong. So we're going to see if we can, uh, you know, do it the correct way this time. Uh, more stasis usage. Yeah. This room, I remember having a lot of grief on it. Yeah, hopefully I can get my revenge this time. Because... Oh god, that was close. Okay, so we're not going to want to put Jerry over here. We're going to put 
clear over here, so let's find a time we can actually switch it. <laughs> that was a great death. Oh no. It's okay. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, Quaff, he didn't call you bad. <laughs> that wasn't the words. He said he was better. <laughs> yeah, I seriously no offense, man. I, I was just saying that since you didn't have a hard time with it, I know I shouldn't. Okay, so this is a very silly cycle to get through. This is actually going to be pretty hard a nightmare. So, we might be in this room for a while. <laughs> I actually just noticed that knife special wasted the bat instantly. It really did. These new nightmare abilities, they're sick. I'm really curious to see what the new Mega Man 4 charge is actually going to be. I wonder how the base damage of it is. Yeah, uh, Quaff said it did uh, pretty well against one of the bosses in Mega Man, so I'm interested to see that myself. Okay, so this is not going well. I think what I'm going to try and do is just, you know, not not try to do that the intended way and just uh, dash past it all. I think that might actually be easier. First thing I'm going to order this bat over because this bat is terrible. <laughs> That's a pretty good kill if I do say so myself. Okay. So Claire is over there now, and we want Claire down there so she can fight the blood timer on the bottom of the room. You're supposed to use Claire to get over here, but you can do it with Jerry if you do weird dash jump shit. Oh god. So I think we're going to go up here with uh, Claire first and clear out the enemies. How does that sound? It sounds pretty good. <laughs> so again, this is one of the rooms I was talking about where you want to get, kind of go ahead and kill the enemies before. Before they... Okay, that's the same bat as over there, so... And uh, on Nightmare, this uh, room is especially hard because I, I really can't afford to take any hits until near the end of the room. So we're going to have to play very uh, well, <laughs> let's say, until <laughs> then. The hair whip really does some work on uh, pack, mo pack mobs like that. Yeah. Uh, this screen, uh... This screen gave me some some hardships in my original playthrough. It really, yeah. This screen is bad, and especially since I can only take three hits total uh, on this nightmare mode. Oh, oh, that was some nice dashing. See, how can you do dashing like that and then randomly get killed by a bat? I don't get it. I'm very inconsistent. Let's see. Okay, thank god there's some health over here. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to do there, but it did not work. Uh, don't tell me you're gonna die here. Yeah, I did. No! Oh, god. That was heartbreaking. So those scorpions get a bit annoying if you let them do that. That's good to know. Nightmare mode is just a mode filled with hardships. We come up stronger because of this. Yeah. So basically, most of the difficulty with this room comes from the fact that you have to play through it uh, pretty uh, 
pretty oh wow I, I don't I can't believe I did that that's that's a new one <laughs> Every time you die, you have to just go, okay, let's do it again. Yeah. Like bootstrap. This is a room that requires patience. It's pretty much all there is to it. You need to just learn how to do it. Oh, and he ran away from me. That's that's great. <laughs> so I'm actually going to try and do this uh, the intended way, which is to, to block with the... Uh... Uh, intended strats? Basically, I'm trying to figure out the w best way to approach this to avoid damage. And not the fastest way, just the safest way. So putting Jerry up there makes this cycle more lenient to get through, even though I just it ended up not mattering anyway, but that's okay. Oh, and you can't actually get back. That's 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 good to know. So I'm gonna go back to doing this the way I was then. What the huh? Can you not bomb jump up there? No, I guess you can't. No, this is too high. So, you're supposed to take the uh, the pipe back, I think, but I'm not really doing this oh, the intended way, so. You probably could have bombed and then back dashed up and got up. Maybe. Maybe. So, this is the first really hard room in the game, I'm going to say, on Nightmare. And on Achilles, this would be much worse. And I don't think we've actually said what Achilles is. Achilles is this one hit kills you, period. No other mm -hmm. changes to the game or anything. No nightmare special abilities. You just you just die. That's it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you will probably feel when you play this game that there might have been hits that you can't avoid. But there's probably a way. And fun story is that the game was actually made like that before Achilles mode even existed. Yeah, Zephyr was uh, not planning to have Achilles mode in the game, but one of the testers told him to edit. And since he had already balanced the game to be, you know, completely fair uh, in terms of not getting hit or anything, it, it worked out pretty well. Okay, so... Oh, I was trying to get cheese earlier. That's that's really fucking great. <laughs> okay, so the intended strat for this is to take Claire up top and use her to block the projectiles from this guy, then use Jerry to go around there. But if you do that, you have to fight a blood giant with Jerry, and I don't want to do that on Nightmare. So we're going to use Claire to do that. <coughs> Uh, glory to cheese. Okay, that was a really tight uh, Claire Juggle. I'm glad I actually did that. Okay, uh, okay. so Moogie, yeah. I'm going to tell you now. Because you've already, you you did it. Yeah. Um, you could have just put Jerry up there and then blocked the projectiles from the start. Uh, that's the thing. You're not actually meant to go up top with a, a Jerry because, uh. Oh wait, yeah, I could have done that, couldn't I? Oh yes, you, yes, you could have. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's great. So, Jerry has to fight some Castlevania enemies now. Like I said, you're not supposed to have Jerry down uh, on this side, but I did uh, the the uh, back jump dash thing, which lets you get enough height to get up there. 
And I was kind of overcomplicating it for myself in the end there. But, okay, it, it's cool. We did the, we did this room the hard way. <laughs> Let's look at it that way. We did it the nightmare way. Oh, and here's another blood tyrant. He's just kind of there. You know, Actually, not used to this uh, whip delay because there is a skill that makes the whip come out faster. But it's okay. These guys, uh, basically, you want to keep them hit stunned. Just kind of watch their animations. Make sure. Oh, this is kind of a joke message. You just need to, this to unlock something at the start of this game, at this uh, area, and you get a nice useless message for it. Fortunately, we don't have to go back through this room. We can just take the pipe. I wonder if it was supposed to do something in like an original build, and he just thought to make it a joke out of it. Yeah, that that might make sense. Like maybe it gave you like some sort of. Uh, maybe you were meant to go use this to go go underwater, but then he decided to add water to the Zelda gate and scrap it or something. I mean, that would be plausible. I don't know. Makes sense to me. And then Zephyr is also just kind of a weird dude, so he might have just added it for a joke. Yeah. There's some very uh, Zephyr-esque humor with some of the uh, <laughs> uh, some of the stuff but, in this game. Like Buttface McGee. <laughs> yes. And the message for getting the uh, the spring ball I thought was very Zephyr-esque. It was, yeah. So here's where you need that. You can go down here to get some items and stuff, but we're not going to do that. And normally you're going to want to kind of explore around here to get more uh, breath power-ups. Again, we're not going to do that because we don't we don't need power-ups where we're going. <laughs> Real men do not need power-ups. And I'm killing myself there because I really want to preserve my breath for this section. And that was just a useless chest. There's some mines. Don't get hit by them. So I'm curious, can you unlock can you input the code even if you don't have a completed game on the save? Yes, you can. You can even oh. input the you can even input uh, a certain code. Let's say. Oh, really? Yeah. So if somebody actually wanted to do a speed run, they would do that ahead of time. Hmm. I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do there, but that's okay. So fortunately, this area seems more or less balanced for having no uh, uh, breath upgrades, which is very, very good, because, you know, we don't. It's not balanced for playing badly, though. Where is the room with, uh, like, the like the slide of mines that you have to go down? That's on the overworld. Oh, I remember. Okay, yeah. I remember, I specifically remember the room, the room name of it, which is, uh, that you die a lot and then you get mad at the game developer. Yeah. And these uh, bombs have kind of fucking hardcore explosion effects. I wanted <laughs> to point that out. They look really cool for some reason. <laughs> They're like uh, War Masters explosions, I think. Oh, yeah? Wow. So. Uh, and there, again, I'm demonstrating how feeble the iframes for taking a hit in this game are. You cannot really try to tank your way through because you're just going to take a bunch, a bunch of damage all at once. And you're going to be very sad. Uh, eight damage! <laughs> How much health would you normally have on a normal playthrough here? I want to say like maybe eight hearts, maybe even more than that. I'd say, well, the Zelda Nightmare Gate is seven. So, and you did the Castlevania yeah. Gate, which... So, I'd say nine, eight or nine, probably, is the normal amount. Okay, so there's no way to set these off except pr via proximity, that's what I was trying to test. Hooray, Nightmare Cheese. <laughs> the 100% cheese played through speeds along. Yeah. Okay. Damn. And uh, 
for the most part in this game, hitboxes exactly correspond to whatever sprite you're looking at. So basically, you can just stay out of the range of those explosions pretty easy. It's not some bullshit hitbox thing. I did a really sweet dodge on that projectile without intending to. That's kind of cool. And what we're doing here is just uh, trying to turn these things on. And I'm going to run out of uh, breath soon. Since we're very slow underwater, we're going to use Claire to activate this and get over here. And you can't... Oh, you can activate those with uh, projectiles. That's actually good to know. <sighs> so, the difficulty and nightmare here comes from the fact that you have to do this fairly quickly because uh, you do not have much air. Yeah, I, I don't remember how many breath upgrades are in the water temple, but I believe there's a, quite a sizable amount. So, uh, real lucky there, it gives us a screen transition so we can attempt this uh, from kind of a checkpoint. Yeah, like he says, this is basically a checkpoint that is not a checkpoint. And you're probably going to want to use Jerry here because he has a smaller hitbox than Claire. That's not to say Claire is fat or anything, it's that she has a wider hitbox. Took a lot of damage there. I want to make jokes about how Claire is fat, but that would be rude. It would be, and 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 we respect Claire more than to do that, don't we, Wafu? <laughs> we do, we do. And we're There's gonna be a million sacred memes about respecting women. So what we're trying to do here is time it so our jumps correspond with these. Uh, uh, fans pushing us towards the next platform. And we're gonna wait for some bubbles because we're real low on oxygen at the t moment. I'm actually probably uh, playing it a little bit too safe here, but I'm not really sure how much air we do have. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna wait up here for this one to turn on. So when I came back here doing item collection, I had the double jump, so I can imagine how that <laughs> speeds this up. And this is kind of spaghetti at the moment, but it's okay because we're not actually dying. It's, 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 it's a-okay. I think you have a base of 20 seconds of air. I don't recall totally. Maybe 15, 20, I don't know. Oh, that, that was a projectile. And okay, we made it through, so this screen seemed to give Quaff a lot of grief. And we're just gonna get both of them past this uh this little obstacle right at the start here. Oh you should you should play the entire X cutscene by the way when we get there to send <laughs> off the e stream. The X cutscene, okay. That that'll be a good way to send off the stream, I think, yeah. Okay, we we got hit, so we're gonna. So you can make this in one cycle if you uh, aren't retarded. Quaff <laughs> says, "Buckle up, this will take five hours." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, Claire or Jerry is a better choice for over here, but whatever. So what you do is you put the secondary character in stasis up there. What you do is you get the character you want to take over there, over there first, so they don't get caught in the fan. And then you get the secondary character in stasis up there. <laughs> yeah, this screen is also kind of hard. It's, it's okay. It's no big deal. We're going to do it. Enmity is just right around the corner. 
so I actually want to go ahead here and kill as many enemies off as first. Like I said, on these longer screens, one thing you're always going to do is uh, kill off as many enemies as possible at first. That way you're not going to, you know, get ganked at the end. So put Claire up here and she'll block projectiles for us. Or some of the projectiles anyway. This, you see, more Clay, like Claire body shaving making her block the projectiles. <laughs> Actually, I have to do this kind of quickly because, you know, air. Okay, we didn't do it quickly enough. Oh, sure. oh no, are you going to drown? Well, I'm gonna die, but yes, we were gonna drown. Oh, shit. You need to give me mod, by the way, so that I can ban ice for smack docking me. <laughs> I don't know how to use Twitch at all, so you're just have, gonna have to work that out yourselves. Oh shit, that was not good. Kind of dickish at the uh, faces throw projectiles at you while you're sitting there waiting for air. Yeah. Okay, so the bubble is time to go through that gap. That's good. And now let's actually make it over here to the air before we die. I'm not sure, again, where, where we went clear, Jerry. It's probably not going to matter too much, but... I want that heart. It's a valuable heart. Oh, it's it's not even a real heart. It's a, it's a fake Castlevania heart. Like a fake gamer girl, which is what Wafu is. Bruh. That's cold. It's okay. You, you beat Wex, you're 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 the realest gamer of them all, pretty much. <laughs> I'm the most non fake gamer girl of all the gamer girls. Yeah. Okay, and you get trapped over there, so we're going to try and get some air real quick. Okay, that's good. Okay, that could have gone very badly, but we all, we we've cleared out the enemies now. So unless something truly uh, uh, special, tragic, yeah, special <laughs> happens, uh, this screen is uh, we're good. We're good. And a little under the five-hour mark. Okay. Oh, right. I need to take clear over there to unlock Jerry. Freaking Jerry. So he's waiting for his ex-girlfriend to bail him out. Not wrong. Okay, so play this real safe. Oh god, that could have been bad. <laughs> you have very little error on the screen. Okay. Please, no tragedy. No tragedy, no tragedy. We're good. So you can see kind of an interesting use of the stasis and switch mechanics here. You turn that off so you can get up at top here, and then you turn it back off. That's some mighty fast typing there. I actually only use two index fingers to type, if you can believe it. Really? Mm-hmm.
I was just uh, insulting Alt because he was shocked that Jerry and Claire were exes and not a couple. And I said that he would know that if he played the bloody game. Yeah, he really would, wouldn't he? So that's kind of a weird uh, property of these things. I guess Jerry has to actually be on screen or something. <laughs> no spaghetti, no spaghetti. No spaghetti. There's no spaghetti here. None. Okay, now we can get some air. We need some air. Oh, I got the two hour message. <laughs> Okay, and just take both of them over here and we're done. We did not take five hours, Quaff, but we did take longer than I would have liked, so it's okay. Oh, and here's some enemies, I guess, just for, you know, good measure. Beat the hardest map in the game. So, this is... These guys are actually weak to projectiles, which is... Uh... Well, not weak, they take normal damage from them, so you want to use the uh, dagger special on them. Actually, learning to fight enemies in new and exciting ways. So, uh, this guy. Let's see if we can beat this guy. First try. Or oh. Not, maybe not first try, but we're going to get past this guy, and then I think we're going to stop for the night. Okay, don't do that. That's, that's very bad bomb aiming. And now, enmity. So, enmity uh, is. He has a lot of attacks, let's say. And uh, the most important thing, though, is to keep your eye, or when you're first playing this, is to keep your eye on where the hands are, since uh, they'll come and they'll quite literally punch you in the face. And, uh, of course, I've, uh, I haven't killed the enmity boosters in a long time since I've been gold timing this guy for so long. But, uh, it's also a good idea to clear them, for the most part. This is another, like, heavy Jerry juggle, uh, Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna be sticking with Jerry for the entire fight, because, you know, he, he, the Jerry juggles are very good against this guy, since he's a stationary target. Uh, basically for big, there's a number of bigger bosses in this game where they're uh, stationary or mostly stationary targets and uh, Jerry, Jerry Juggles work well against them in particular. Uh, also, the uh, enemy, the boosters on his back take three times from explosive, I believe, which is another good reason why Jerry is good for him. So the very low uh, dash regeneration is kind of bad in this fight, but that's okay. Nice bombing. This is another good uh, showcase of why bombs are great. Which is, uh, someone new to this probably would not think to be able to hit the bombs from there. So... Okay. Oh, it's time for my favorite part! Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, ah. hope can, I hope the stream can hear those, <laughs> those sounds. You get an achievement for getting 150 hits. I didn't manage to do that, but there th this happens several more times throughout the game, so we'll have more opportunities. Uh, sometimes you just kind of randomly kill bosses like that. <laughs> As you can see, Jerry is very confused as well, and uh, I love that. <laughs> it's so dorky, but it's, it's kind of a charming kind of dorky. Yeah. So uh, again, that boss is easy if you can do some fairly advanced Jerry juggles. Like you're not really supposed to hit him with a normal type of D in there because he gets resistance to it. But I just kind of did it. Um, I'd be again, I'd be surprised if you could do that timing your first time through, but feel free to surprise me, because I, I just showed you a pretty easy strat for him right there. And you get some uh, 
Claire and Jerry bickering. As we said, they're they're exes. They have kind of not an on again, off again thing, but they they're still clearly in each other's thoughts. Let's say. Oh, and we can't skip this cutscene. There's there's occasionally cutscenes you can't skip, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure if it's oversight or if it's just. A oh wait. This is the good one, though, isn't it? Oh, no, no. Not. X doesn't do it yet. We'll start with that one next time, or more or less. <laughs> so, yeah, there's some cutscenes you can't skip. I, I'm wondering it might have to do with flags or something. Like, if you skipped it, it wouldn't set the map right. So, whatever. It's, it's not a big deal. This game has re no real cutscenes. It's basically just te text boxes. You can get matched to it fast. Like I said earlier, this is not a game that's heavy on anything except actual playing of it. I mean, there is a fair amount of text, and uh, there is a, a pretty elaborate, well, let's say elaborate story, but uh, it's all presented <laughs> in a very uh, very straightforward, basic fashion, so it's not going to eat up a lot of time, even if you do take the time to read it all. And I, I do recommend taking the time to read it all. I, like, we give this game some shit from time to time, but like, it does have some charming characters and some funny moments here and there, and the, the true ending is uh, satisfying, so yeah. Do give this story a kind of a shot. Oh, I want, uh, just as a note, I'll just say that uh, don't try too hard to worry about the specifics of the darkness and the program and shit like that. It's it's hard to follow with that, but you only really need to worry about what's directly happening at the time. Yeah, so. the story is a lot better if you don't try to worry about the terms because it seems like they make up a new uh, plot device for Jeremy every other scene so yeah just kind of take it in stride it's 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 a fun video game thing basically and we're gonna save here and I think that's gonna be it for tonight's stream what do you think Wafu yeah that's good about a good two hours or so yeah so. I think that uh, that worked out actually much better than I was planning for it too didn't have much trouble with death because you know I actually took the time to practice mm -hmm. Final Nightmare, I beat him first try, got past basketball, and I'm very pleased with that. That is, uh, uh, again, that is a boss I had a lot of trouble with, and I'm pleased to see my progress on it. And uh, Inmini, we beat him first try, so that, that's also good. I don't think Only Inmini, a minor tragedy on one room. Inmini would probably be a pretty easy boss to even Achilles. So uh, We actually had the most trouble with the platforming this time around, I think, which is not what I was expecting. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. Just, uh, the hazards doing so much damage to you is uh, so brutal. Yeah. So uh, we're still discovering new things about the game of Nightmare. I'm enjoying how this is shaping up. Like I said, it's it's turning out way uh, difficult in ways I didn't expect. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, maybe this weekend we can do some pretty long streams if Wafu is up for it. Um, you know me. <sighs> yeah, it's a work in progress. All right, see you. Bye.